Dear students, I am Dr. Aruna Mohan from Delhi University and today I am discussing with you certain aspects of menstrual cycle. You all know that menstrual cycle is a reproductive cycle and it is primarily found in primates like monkeys, apes and also human female. Now, menarche a word which I would like you to be familiar with. Menarche is the first bleeding or first reproductive cycle in a human female or first menstrual cycle. So, menarche is initiation of menstruation in human female. Whereas, menopause is going to be the last cycle or the end cycle of a reproductive period. Also, here I would like to emphasize that if there is menstrual bleeding and if there is a regular menstrual cycle, that means the female is fertile. So, it is an indication of good fertility in a female. Now, let us discuss more about this reproductive cycle. Before I go into detail, you should also be familiar with another word which is parallel to this, Easter cycle. Easter cycle is four day cycle, a reproductive cycle found in rats. But menstrual cycle which is found in primates is of 28 days duration. Here is the diagrammatic representation of menstrual cycle. In the previous sessions, we have discussed about ovary, the ovarian follicles, the graphene follicle, the corpus luteum and the corpus albicans. Now, let us apply that knowledge for the understanding of menstrual cycle. You can see in this diagram that to start with the follicle is immature and it is becoming mature gradually. It is happening under the influence of follicle stimulating hormone or FSH from anterior pituitary. Follicle stimulating hormone will stimulate the ovarian follicle. Here stimulation is equal to growth or enlargement or maturation. With the result the follicle is becoming more and more mature till it becomes fully mature and we call it graphene follicle at that point of time. This takes around 14 days. I will again take you back to make you understand the process. I said FSH is coming from anterior pituitary acting on ovarian follicles. Then immature follicle is becoming mature under the influence of FSH. Now this mature follicle is called graphene follicle and this graphene follicle becomes source of estrogen, one of the two sex hormones in human female. Now this follicle is ready for ovulation and ovulation takes place in mid cycle. Our cycle is of 28 days, that means ovulation should be around 14th day. This will also mean Suppose a girl is having cycle of 30 days, then ovulation may be around 15th day or if girl is having cycle of 26 days, then it will be around 13th day, but normal length is considered 28 days. We have understood the role of FSH and estrogen. We can see now that because of FSH, the follicle was growing and because of growth of follicle, estrogen was released. So, we can say this phase follicular phase or estrogen phase and this is the story of 14 days. Now, we have reached up to graphene follicle which is ready to ovulate which is going to be mid cycle and once ovulation takes place, the ova is released and this graphene follicle is converted to corpus luteum that is graphene follicle minus ova. This corpus luteum is a temporary endocrine gland, a source of second female sex hormone called progesterone. Before I come into the detail of progesterone, 
I would like to tell about one more hormone called LH, luteinizing hormone coming from anterior pituitary. So, first was FSH from anterior pituitary which made finally the graphene follicle and second one is LH, the luteinizing hormone which will help in causing ovulation. Ovulation is also known as luteinization and hence the luteinizing hormone. So, one more point to remember that at the time of ovulation, LH is definitely available. That is why ovulation took place. We can also say this was LH surge. It is luteinizing hormone surge which will cause ovulation. Ovulation has taken place and graphene follicle is converted to corpus luteum. The corpus luteum is called luteum because it is slightly yellowish in color and it is indication that it is active and live. It secretes a hormone progesterone which is available throughout the post ovulatory phase which is around 14 days again. As I have indicated in the beginning that menstrual cycle in human female is of 28 days on an average. 14 days have gone before ovulation, so 14 days are left. So this post ovulatory phase is going to be around 14 days and lifespan of this corpus luteum is also around 14 days in case of non-pregnant female. The hormone which is coming out is progesterone and this is also known as pregnancy hormone which is going to maintain uterine endometrium. Why? To receive the fertilized egg. Not every month the fertilized egg will come. Then what will happen? The corpus luteum will die, regress, disintegrate and will be converted to corpus albicans. The word albicans, albino, it indicates something white. So, corpus albicans is white and it is dead, it is non-active, it is not releasing progesterone anymore. Suppose fertilization had taken place, then this corpus luteum would have survived for 90 days to maintain the pregnancy. In that case, it is very natural that next cycle cannot occur. I will come into detail of this a little later. Because progesterone is available in second half of the cycle, post ovulatory cycle, that is why we can also say post ovulatory cycle as secretory phase. So, pre ovulatory or follicular phase and post ovulatory or secretory phase. Now, in absence of pregnancy, in absence of fertilization, corpus luteum will die on 14th day, hence, progesterone will not be available. Now, neither FSH is there nor estrogen is there because graphene follicle died after ovulation. LH is also not there because ovulation had taken place. Now, progesterone is also not there because corpus luteum has disintegrated. So, all the four hormones are not available. So, field is clear and the bleeding takes place because there is no progesterone to hold the uterine endometrium which is filled with blood to provide cushion to the fertilized egg which did not come. Now this cushion or this endometrium, blood filled endometrium will slough off in the form of bleeding for 4 days and then the next cycle history will begin like FSH, estrogen, LH and progesterone. So this is what our menstrual cycle hormonal picture is. So, now we know that the hormones involved in menstrual cycle are primarily FSH, LH, estrogen and progesterone. Here I would like to mention that growth hormone or somatotrophic hormone STH, it is always in the picture within because wherever growth is taking place, growth hormone figures. So, in this case, there was growth in the uterus of the endometrium, the uterine endometrium. So, growth hormone is within and this we call synergistic action. When 
so many hormones work together to make one work possible, then it is called synergistic action of the hormones and menstrual cycle is one example of synergistic action. Ovarian follicles you have already learned, they will be developing follicle, they will be graphene follicle, they will be ovulation, they will be corpus luteum and corpus albicans. These are the stages of follicle. Coming to fertilization, once ovum has come out, ovulation has taken place. Now, if a sperm is available, then fertilization will take place. I think we have made this point clear in our previous sessions also that life of ova in female body is 48 hours and life of a sperm in the female body is also 48 hours. So, it is important that when a sperm is available in female reproductive tract, at that time ova should be available. And by now, students, you know that ova is available on 14th day or mid cycle, 14th day of the cycle or mid cycle. That means our fertility period is going to be around ovulation two days before and two days after. If ova has come on 14th day and a sperm was introduced on 12th day, okay, this sperm is going to be alive for two days by the time ova comes. Or if ova came on 14th day and his sperms were introduced on 15th or 16th day, then also fertilization may take place because ova is alive for two days. That means our fertility period is four days, two days before ovulation and two days after ovulation. So, if we carefully keep history of or dates of our menstrual cycle, then we can roughly calculate the fertility period. Now, if fertilization is taking place or in other words, if ova and sperms both are available in female tract in the fallopian tube, then sperms will, so many sperms will move towards this ova and one will be able to penetrate. You can see the structure of ova, there is ova surrounded by gelatinous layer and surrounded by cellular layer. The gelatinous layer is zona pellucida and cellular layer is corona radiata. This sperm will penetrate the outer layer and try to enter in. The moment it pricks, the outer layer of ova becomes hardened and hence second sperm cannot make the entry. And once the fertilization has taken place, then this fertilized egg or now called zygote will start moving down to the fallopian tube and finally reach the uterus where it will be implanted. So, you can understand that value of menstrual cycle is that we are able to produce ova which can be fertilized and the new baby can be formed and this is one way for the continuation of a species and hence menstrual cycle in primates is an indication of fertility. With this, I come to the end of this session. Thank you. Thank you.